today is September the 10th of 2020. The topics I would like to discuss today is gaslighting and uh, tribulation. I don't know if people are aware of what we are seeing and have been seeing for quite some time in the media. Um, it is just total uh, gaslighting. It's like everything that is right is now wrong. Uh, what was moral is now immoral. Uh, they're trying to implement uh, perversion in place of things that are always considered to be moral and good. Uh, we're just seeing so much of it. Uh, I don't know if y'all are following mainstream media, but uh, mass media has become a wasteland. It is just nothing but gaslighting. It, I mean, it's just insane how we are seeing so many lies and so many deceptions. And I mean, we can use President Trump as a prime example. He'll say one thing and then they go in there and they will totally twist it out of context. I don't care if you're a Trump follower or voter or what. It don't matter at this point uh, who you are, quote, voting for because he is a prime example of how the media twists and just totally gaslights. This is a prime example how they are gaslighting the perceptions of people all across this nation. But anyway, right here is a kind of a small definition. I'm not going to get in real depth, but gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation in which a person or group covertly sows seeds of doubt and deception and lies uh, in a targeted individual or group, making them question their own memory, their perceptions, or judgment, often invoking in them cognitive dissonance and other changes. Uh, I mean, it can go as far as your self-esteem also, but, you know, we're seeing morals. Uh, we're like, this is a spiritual battle. You know, the mark of the beast, people are all worried about the RFID or some kind of stuff, some chip. Um, it's in your brain. Mark of the beast. This is Satan, the devil. When he is revealed, the mark of the beast is in your forehead. It's what's in your brain. It's what you perceive. It's what you judge or you or where you feel is morally right. And if you're on the wrong path already, just wait for it. It's it's going to get worse. But uh, because we're seeing what is always been good is now become bad or evil. They're trying to flip things upside down. I want to let's go to images here real quick and we can you can just do a Google that's all this is it's just a quick Google search and you can kind of see some of the different methods of manipulations and the def definitions or emotional how it affects people uh, it just goes on and on this list is really long and you can just kind of see some of the stuff that is out there but it is making people into rabid dogs. Uh, if they are left-leaning, uh, you're seeing it. Even on the right, it's, it's inflaming them also, the way this is going about. Because you've got two whole different groups. One thinks that they're righteous, while the other one thinks that they're righteous. This is how this gaslighting is working. Now I'd like to jump over to the word tribulation. We hear this word a lot. It talks about the end time tribulation satan's tribulation when he is revealed as the false christ you know we read about it in uh, matthew 24 mark 13 luke 21 second thessalonians 2 uh, satan's tribulation upon the earth well the word tribulation has a lot of uh, depth to it if we want to take time to go research it but it Definition means distress or suffering resulting from oppression or persecution. It's also a trying experience. It's a trial. It talks about testing time. Um, we can go down here for the synonyms of tribulation. Affliction, agony, anguish, distress, excruciation, hurt, misery, pain, rack, straits. Uh, that's an interesting word. You know, I think about King David. Uh, he's between a between a great strait, torment, torture, travail, or woe. 
So when you see these words, travail and woe, uh, anguish, uh, there's a lot of words here that you can go in and when you read our Heavenly Father's Word and you can apply them uh, for a deeper understanding. What I found really interesting when I researched this word is, is talking about uh, a threshing board. Isn't that an interesting word, threshing board? We're talking about grain. Our Heavenly Father uses the harvest. Uh, different aspects of farming, uh, agriculture, you know, planting, sowing seeds, uh, tilling the soil. Uh, he uses animals, all kinds of different things in his word to teach us what he's really talking about to get that deeper understanding. So when we look at this word tribulation, uh, going back to the old English and French, uh, to oppress or afflict is in relation to also a noun meaning threshing board. And it says, a dialogue of comfort against tribulation. Uh, define the title word as every such thing as troubleth or grieveth a man either in body or mind. Now, aren't these interesting things? You know, when we think about this word gaslighting, uh, when it disturbs you or grieves you in body and mind, you know, so we're talking about in your perceptions. It can be physical. It can also be mental. So let's go look up what a threshing board is. A threshing board is obsolete, pretty much. I mean, there's still a lot of nations that use them. Uh, in agriculture, implement used to separate cereals from their straw. The chaff and the wheat, uh, does that ring a bell? Talks about um, a board that's got jagged stones, or it was used in farming to separate the grain from the chaff at harvest. Uh, placed stone side down. The board was pulled by oxen or mules over the wheat or other cereal on a threshing floor, separating out the straw without damaging the seed. Let's get a closer look at this. As you can see, it looks like it's got um, a way to hook it up to probably a team of oxen or what have you to slide it along that threshing floor. Isn't this interesting? what we're kind of seeing uh, happen with this gaslighting and uh, talk, talking about tri tribulation and uh, that testing time. Here's an example right here. Here's the oxen and here's this person sitting on the board as it's pulled along the threshing floor. But this is a threshing board. Interesting. But anyway, I just wanted to point out a few of these things. Uh, we are sure seeing uh, this gaslighting, uh, and it's insane. We know it's uh, the flood of the end times. It's not, I mean, I mean we're warned. Uh, it's as in the days of Noah were, <clears throat> but the flood, when we go to the book of Revelation, it's not a flood of water. It's a flood of lies and deception that issues out of their mouths. It's issues out of their mouths and their deceptions is what they keep quote programming or broadcasting and that's their seeds that's their seeds right there the broadcast of the lamestream media and all their lies or, or even social media they're broadcasting their own seeds of destruction and lies and wickedness and we're seeing it uh, with within this new term they want to call it gaslighting but it, there it is this tribulation it's just like this on this board right here on that threshing floor you know that separation between the wheat and the chaff or the cereal the grain and the stems here it is uh, that tribulation that mark of the beast is in your forehead it's in your brain it's in your perceptions on what you are watching and what is being broadcast and fed to you. So we live in trying times, <clears throat> brothers and sisters, and this is, uh, this is really crazy, the way uh, all of this is coming to be. Now to go to Revelation 12, the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. 
And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is those who endure until the end, right here. These are the overcomers, right here. Not the ones that are taken and destroyed in the flood of Satan's lies when he appears. You know, we hear all this, oh, I want to be the first one taken. Well, if you go back to the topic of what is being discussed, Jesus is telling us about the false Christ, which is going to be Satan the devil, when he's cast out to, quote, test through tribulation, through, quote, gaslighting, if you want to use that term, today's modern term, but it's in your perceptions. It's on who you're going to believe. Are you going to believe the false Christ and fall away to the false husband? Are you going to stand and wait for the great day of the Lord, which happens at the seventh and last trump? It's written, we don't have to guess when our Lord Jesus is returning. He returns at the last trump. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 53. Last trump is the seventh trump. It's the last trump. It's real simple. Satan comes at the sixth seal, the sixth trump, the sixth vial. That's when he is here de facto in person, pretending to be Jesus, pretending to be the Messiah. And we can go back to Revelation 9, because our Lord has told us, about that crown that's going to be given to Satan for this testing time. Satan comes as a, quote, servant of the Lord. Just like the king of Babylon came as a servant of the Lord. Or like King Cyrus came as a servant of the Lord. You know, we have several that are mentioned. And it's for that testing time or for punishment. Uh, but, you know, our Heavenly Father is not going to have wrath against those that love him and hold and make that stand for him and keep the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Revelation 9, it says here, The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. This word darken, I mean, it goes back to wickedness, confusion, oppression, suffering. Uh, it goes, if you go into Genesis 1, uh, it really explains it. Verse 3, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as as scorpions of the earth have power. Uh, that's not a good place to be. These scorpions, they hurt. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Heavenly Father knows how to protect his own. Go to Hebrews 11. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as a torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Now, this is going to be after that. That's when our Lord Jesus Christ returns, and they realize that they've been deceived. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. It's because it is going to be men. It's going to be them fallen angels, and they look like we do except they're in a spiritual body. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. It means they're going to tear you up. If you, ain't, if you do not have the seal of God in your forehead, they're going to chew you up with their lies. And they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as sound of chariots, as many horses running to battle. These breastplates is in representation of, like, priests, uh, they come pretending to be holy, or angels of light, you know, those Palladians, you know, they've got their own little message with Horus and all that nonsense from Egypt, so there it is. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stinks in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. That's twice, five months. 
Christ said that he had shortened the time for the elect's sake. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. Both mean the death angel. Satan is death. That's He's been condemned to die, Ezekiel 28. And here he is right here, Apollyon and Abaddon. Uh, he is, uh, he's the fake father, Antipas. And one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more after. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. This is that point of, uh, divide uh, between uh, Babylon and Israel, those who prevail with God's help or those who are in Babylon in confusion, uh, being gaslit or, you know, uh, that do not have a seal of God in their foreheads. They have taken the mark of the beast. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. This is for that particular instant to slay a third part of the men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus, oops, and thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jasmine and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. They're going to look royal, but they're not. And out of their mouths issue fire and smoke and brimstone. And all of these is like smoke and mirrors, fire is going to inflame you with their lies. And the brimstone, that's what comes what? After all the, after the smoke and the fire, uh, what's left is the brimstone is what's left. It's burned, cinder. By these three with this third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. This is that flood of lies and deception. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. Tails, when it, you take this back in Hebrew, it goes back to false prophets, lies, deception, which brings suffering, sorrow, oppression, uh, torment, self, I mean, self-hatred is what is going to, uh, that weeping and gnashing of teeth is where all this leads when you believe, uh, the lies. For their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men, <clears throat> which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of their works, of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, near, nor hear, nor walk. Verse 21, Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, uh, perversion, and everything else, nor of their thefts. And they're not going to, just like it's written here, because they think they're being righteous. They think their cause, uh, they're being gaslit to believe a lie and deceptions. This is what we're seeing. They've been taught this in grade school up through college now. And now these people are grown, and some of them are in places of power uh, and authority. They're in our Congress. This is how wicked this has gotten at this point. And I wanted to go to Revelation 15, uh, verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plugs. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the glass, sea of glass, having the harps of God. 15. And they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. This goes back to Deuteronomy 34. Saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Verse 4. Who shall not fear thee, or revere thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, 
For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Verse 5, And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. Want to know where the ark is? There it is. Uh, 6, And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plugs clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. Verse 7, And one of the four beasts came unto the seven angels, or gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials, full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plugs of the seven angels were fulfilled. These are those last seven plugs that will be poured out after all the righteous has been gathered into the Lord. This is where it is right here. The song of Moses. They will be singing the song of Moses and the Lamb. These are the overcomers at that seventh and last trump. Those who endure in the flesh till the very end when that seventh trump sounds, they shall be gathered to the Lord at that moment. That's that seventh and last trump. Those who uh, die in the flesh before that point, and if they're in Christ, they will be gathered to Christ. It's, you know, as soon as their spirit, their, their soul leaves their body, they will be present with the Lord. And they will come with him when he returns at that seventh and last trump. Another form of gaslighting, the pre-tribulation rapture, deadly deception. There are thrones for those who faithfully make it through the tribulation period of Satan. This is the time that we have been prepared for. Though many may not know it, many are deceived, many are just not taught, um, whether uh, maliciously or through ignorance. But this tribulation that's coming upon the earth is, is leading to Satan's tribulation. And, <clears throat> you know, the wrath of the Lord happens at the end. Uh, those are those last seven vials that are poured out. But, you know, the overcomers are the ones that overcome the mark of the beast by keeping the testimony of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ till the end. And I briefly wanted just to point out a couple of little memes here and uh, show a few things before we continue on with uh, what I was talking about, the gaslighting and the tribulation. And I wanted to share this little meme that has popped up in my Facebook feed. If everyone is freaking out now, wait until the rapture happens and everyone finds out there really is a God. Can you say amen? Well, you know, we've been hearing all this uh, gaslighting and uh, tribulation and trying to understand the depth of what all this means. Do you think that Satan hasn't already been gaslighting uh, in the past, do you think that there hasn't been dabbling in our word, our letter from our Heavenly Father in our King James Version Bibles uh, with doctrines being su substituted and words being substituted and all the different, uh, quote, uh, perceptions and meanings have been changed instead of starting a chapter and then reading that chapter and the topic on what is being discussed, uh, they want to, you know, jump around from one chapter to another chapter and pick, pick a piece here and a piece there and twist everything up. Gaslighting. Uh, it's, it's our gaslighting our perceptions. You know, um, this word right here is not in God's word. It's not in the Bible. This word right here, rapture. Now, if you take this word back as they want to use it, uh, I mean, because we have this, uh, this tribulation, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, all this blah, blah, trib. Well, there's Satan's tribulation. There's just Satan's tribulation, and then there's the wrath of God. So, when we read, you know, where Jesus is telling us about the end times or signs of the end, he's telling us about Satan's tribulation, how it's going to be. And then, like in Matthew 24, we get to the part where he's talking about 
uh, those taken, they're taken by the false Christ. In other words, they're deceived by the false Christ. They're taken, and what happened in the flood of Noah's time? They were taken, mo the, the bulk of the people on the world, in the earth, were destroyed. Only those that were safely on the ark, that were within that ark and had the seal of God on them, you know, his protection, those were left. Not left behind, but they were left. They remained. So when you see this word rapture, that's not in God's word, why, why isn't this going, if everyone is freaking out now, wait until that gathering, the gathering happens, gathering unto the Lord. When does that happen? You know, there's a lot of people going, oh, it could happen in any minute or at any moment. But you know what? In 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 53, it says at the last trump, this is not a, it's not a guessing game. It is written. It doesn't get any plainer. When it is written, don't change it. So if the last trump in the book of Revelation is the seventh, well, then you go look up and, and read the book of Revelation and see what happens in the seventh trump. Because that's when the gathering is. That's when the gathering to the Lord is. And then his wrath is going to be poured out. That cup that Jesus holds it's going to be poured out on the wicked ones and the wicked rudiments or the evil rudiments. Those that are with the Lord are not appointed to his wrath because they're going to follow and do what he, he has told us to do, like in Matt, uh, Mark 13, about not to premeditate what we shall say when you're delivered up before the synagogues or the councils of the wicked ones, the councils of Satan, who is death. So, you know, this word rapture here shouldn't be here and this whole pre-trib not that's just confusion that's just gaslighting i keep seeing this meme and thought to address it every eye shall see the brightness of our lord jesus christ at his return his second advent there's only two uh he's already had one when he was born a babe and he sacrificed his life and died for our sins on the cross but he's returning on another horse but this horse or it's not a, a donkey this is a white stallion a war stallion and he's got that cup and that's the cup that he was praying that would be passed if there wasn't another way but there's not and every knee shall bow when our true savior returns at that last trump and gathers his faithful there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for those who are deceived or raptured, or enraptured, or ravished. This is the word, ravished. If you look up the word ravish, it goes to the word enraptured. By Satan, the false husband. He comes as the false Christ. People are waiting and looking for the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But they, they don't understand when it is, when it's writ, well written. In 1 Corinthians 15. Right here, 50 through 53. Everything in 2 Thessalonians 2, Satan is revealed first. Then Christ returns afterwards. Matthew 24, Christ gives us all the, the chain of events as we find them in the book of Revelation. Mark 13, Luke 21, it's all written there. If everyone is going to see the brightness of our Lord Jesus Christ returning at his second advent, then that should tell you that anything that comes before that is false Christ. It's lies. It's the gaslighting. It's Satan's tribulation. There it is. You're part of that threshing board, the the threshing floor. You know the harvest, uh, the the grapes squished in the in the wine press. Uh, all of those things are right there. See, uh, the warning and the gaslighting has been detected. Flood of the end times is like the flood of Noah's time, but it's not water. It's a flood of lies and deceptions, and it issues out of their mouths. And that strong delusion to believe a lie, you know, Heavenly Father said, if you want to believe a lie, if you want to believe false doctrines, or believe the agenda or the traditions that has already been handed down, he's going to allow it. He's gonna let it. He's gonna let it be, 
and you can believe the lies, but then there's going to be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth, you know, when the true Christ returns and it's revealed at the brightness of his coming. The teacher is God's word. He tells us how many times and when does Jesus Christ return? In Hebrews 9, 28, there's only two. One's already happened, and that leaves one remaining advent. And when does this happen? It is after, after, A-F-T-E-R, after Satan's tribulation. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verse 52. It says it's after the last trump. So when does this last trump sound? We can find it in Revelation 11. Uh, it's in 15 and 19. Are all things revealed and foretold? Yes, Jesus told us. There's not a secret in this. He's given us the information that we need in order to make that stand. Satan comes first, pretending to be the Messiah, pretending to be Christ, God, whatever religion you are, whatever faith he's coming pretending to be. He's going to unify them all, and he's going to be one and all. He is the bad boy. He's the bad guy, and he brings an army of bad guys. He's fallen angels. His number is the six seal, six trump, six vial. Look it up in the book of Revelation. Don't fall for the bad guy. To go further, right here is a rapture. Right here on the left-hand side. This is what the Latin word means. It means to be like taken in a siege, raped, ravished, seduced, taken by force. In other words, Satan is coming with his flood of lies, and your battlement is what you perceive. That I mean, uh, what you think in your mind, your wall. You let you let down your your uh, stronghold, and you open the gates wide open, and you let him in. This is what we're you know looking at with this gaslighting and the tribulate. Satan's tribulation is through persuasion. It's through false doctrines. It's false traditions. This word uh, rapture, a dark kiss of rapture. Now, do you think that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is going to seduce you like this? Do you think he's going to take you by force and commit some kind of a sexual act with you? Or, or, you know, this is what we're talking about with this word rapture. It's a sexual innuendo of it. Uh, left behind. Here's another part of it. You know, this is a novel and it was made into a movie. Guess what? This word behind is not in the God's word. Those who were taken and then those who were left. Left means remain. They remained. You know, Heavenly Father destroyed the wicked ones in that flood of Noah's time. He preserved. He saved. He left remaining those who were on the ark. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. What does Jesus tell us in that one? Who was taken and destroyed? And who remained? Who was left? Righteous Lot. That's what I'm talking about. But he didn't get yanked up and disappear somewhere. You know, with like leaving his clothes and all of a sudden his body just disappeared. Which is what this rapture teaching is. So we're talking about gaslighting. Go back to the word gathering and look what that word means. It's like a mother hen bringing her little chicks up under her wings. Nurturing and guarding and protecting. You know, that's our Lord Jesus Christ. Not this kind of a depiction. If you're there, if you're thinking this in a physical, fleshly kind of uh, thought here, this is not right. Something's wrong. These words do not, are not there. I don't know how to make it any plainer, but you know, time is really ticking here. The doctrine is to take the church to the first one that shows up because they think he's just going to appear at any time, and that's, that's not true. Jesus says he's re returning at the last trump, and it's documented in the book of Revelation. This is not hard to understand my friends it's not hard to understand but time is ticking 
The word rapture is not there. If God wanted to use that word, he'd have put it in there. I have so many friends and family that are falling into this gaslighting doctrine. I mean, this has been around for a long time, so don't think that Satan hadn't already put it there. This word right here, the word rapture, is a Latin legal term that comes from the, like, 13th century is what it was. And it was an offense on a woman. You know, we're supposed to be the brides of Christ and not fall away to the false husband. You know, when the true Christ returns and he finds his, quote, bride, they're supposed to be the brides of Christ, and he finds them with child or giving nurse or suck to a, a baby, that means that they've been unfaithful. Anyway, I don't want to get too sidetracked on this, but I wanted to point this out. This movie is a novel. It was a novel. It was made into a movie and left behind. And I hear this a lot, too, this left behind stuff, and it just makes me want to vomit because they don't even understand that this word behind is not there. And they don't understand that this word rapture is not there. There is no, uh, th this pre-trib, all this is just nonsense. Just understand there's Satan's tribulation and it's coming. We're seeing the mark of the beast in action, parts of it. Not the full, because Satan ain't here yet. But we're sure seeing it gaslighting. It's lit up. It is lit up like crazy. It's coming. I don't know when, but hey, there it is. This word's not there. Think about that word gathering and go back and reread everything and keep it in context chapter by chapter and verse by verse to understand what is going on in what the topic is. Okay, and now I'd like to end uh, this short video. The Lord is in his holy temple in Psalms 11 to the chief musician, a psalm of David. In the Lord put I my trust. How say you to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? Verse 2, for lo, the wicked bend their bow, their uh, toxin bows, uh, that first writer in Revelation 6, 2, toxin rainbow. They make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may prevalently shoot at the upright in heart. Verse 3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And this is what they think. Verse 4, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. It's wherever he is. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. Verse 5, the Lord trieth the righteous. Trieth, right here, this word. But the wicked in him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Verse 6, Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. We're seeing it right now, part of it. It ain't all, I mean, it's going to get worse when Satan appears. This deception, this fire, and brimstone. For the righteous, verse 7, For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doeth behold the upright. Let's go up here to verse 6, and we'll just take a look at these words. Wicked, morally wrong, concretely a bad person or condemned, guilty, ungodly, wicked man that did wrong. And he, our Heavenly Father, shall reign, that is to cause rain upon, snares, a metallic sheet as pounded thin, also a spring net. It's spread out like a lamina, gin, thin, plate, snare, fire. Literally or figuratively is a burning fire, flame, flaming hot, and brimstone. Let's look at this word. Uh, it's talking about a cypress resin or by analogy sulfur. Uh, it's talking about a kind of tree or wood or used for building apparently the cypress or gopher. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, brimstone. And a horrible, it's talking about horrible, it says a glow of wind or anger. Also a famine that's consuming, hor horrible, horror or terrible. And the tempest is a wind by semblance breath. Uh, what, what comes out of your mouth? Uh, yeah, that's breath, ruach, uh, life, anger. Uh, talking about uh, resembling a spirit or only of a rational being, expressions, 
functions, air, anger, blast, breath, uh, talking about courage or mind and quarter, vain, uh, a whirlwind, this shall be the portion, the allotment, the law or providence of their cup, and, you know, and that cup or lot, uh, you know, is in the hand of the Lord, and, uh, it was uh, given to Jeremiah. He that cup of Babylon is is being poured out. Jerusalem is trembling. Uh, <clears throat> or and this is probably an owl. How about that one? The cup, like cavity of its eyes, and righteous is just or lawful. Love it to have affection for. Uh, it's like a love of a child. Like a a parent loves her child. Uh, the righteous is uh, objectively just or morally virtue, moral virtue. And we know what these things mean, even though we all fall short at times. Uh, none of us are, quote, righteous in the eyes of the Lord. We're all like dirty rags. But um, our Lord gives us uh, repentance. Repent for your sins and uh, strive to be the best that you can be according to what our Heavenly Father gives us. And tells us to be those things that are just. And always know that he watches everything we do. Everything we say. He knows. He knows in advance. And we're accountable for it. And we should. You know as a Christian we know that we are accountable. To a higher authority. A higher power. And uh, but you know we have these people out there. That they're, they don't feel like they're accountable for anything. We're talking about true lawlessness. Uh, they don't want to be uh, held accountable for anything. They think they can do whatever they want, and this is this is where it's at. This uh, gaslighting and the tribulation that we're seeing. Anyway, our Lord sees His countenance. He He knows, and He does watch the righteous. So you know, be a pleasure in His sight, and do strive to stay in His will at all times. God bless everyone, and. Uh, May he, our Lord strengthen and guide us uh, according to his will in all things.